This is the Guns Magazine podcast quick hit episode number 50. Hi there, and welcome to another quick hit episode of the Guns Magazine podcast. I'm your host and the editor of Guns Magazine, Brent Wheat. Thanks for joining us as we talk to the interesting people who make up the world of shooting, hunting, and the firearms industry. Today's episode is another gathering of our resident gun cranks, myself, Roy Huntington, and American Handgunner editor, Tom McHale, as we try to answer the age-old question of, how much real-world experience does a firearms instructor need? Do you have to have military or law enforcement experience to teach skill at arms, or does it even matter? However, before we get started, I would like to remind you this episode of the Guns Magazine podcast is sponsored by our friends at Kimber. Kimber was founded with the singular purpose of making every firearm the best it can possibly be with a fit and finish that only practiced hands can achieve and appreciate. Whether you carry a Kimber for personal protection, hunting, or competition, know that their promise of quality without compromise is how they measure success. To learn more about Kimber Firearms, visit KimberAmerica.com. You know, whenever talk turns to firearms training, the argument soon follows about the requirements for a good concealed carry instructor. Do you need to be a Delta Ninja Ranger SEAL with 100 confirmed kills to instruct accountants and truck drivers how to protect themselves with a handgun? Or is it more important just to be a good teacher? As you might imagine, we've got more than a few thoughts on the matter. Now here's our Guns Magazine podcast quick hit episode on firearms instructor qualifications. Let's hit our topic today, which is, do you need to, I wrote this down, do you need to be a Delta Ninja SEAL super stealth spy to teach firearms? And we're not necessarily talking like your local 4-H or NRA basic class, but, you know, everybody's teaching all kinds of tactical super ninja shooter stuff. And the discussion uh, got quite animated the other night when we were saying, do you have to have prior military, prior law enforcement or something? to be hanging your shingle out as a uh, instructor. And there was, as you can imagine, a lot of opinion and some ruffled feathers. So we thought, <laughs> well, let's just do it tonight. Well, so, Hey, it's actually timely, though. With, it is. What, what are we estimated? Something like 5 million new gun owners in the past couple? Is that the right number? Exactly. In the past yeah. few months. And a lot of people are out there looking for training. So yep. And that's actually no, what no, inspired. no. Or they're not looking for training? Uh, no, there's a lot of people out there not looking for training yeah. of those five million. Well, there are people out there looking we for training. We both know, okay. yeah. And a lot of people should be that. out there looking for training. A lot that? of people should be yep. out there looking for training. <laughs> there we go. And a lot of people are hanging their shingles, so, yeah. you know, are, should they be hanging their shingle? And I, I always do tell people from the get-go, number one, there's no real test to say, I am a super ninja squirrel gunfight instructor. <laughs> I mean, what do you guys think? Do you, do you have to have confirmed kills to be teaching tactics and shooting? At least seven. <laughs> you know, I'm just well, you know when Jeff Cooper first started Gunsight, as I recall, because I was alive then, uh, <laughs> part of the rule was in order to be an instructor, you had to have been involved in a shooting. Yeah. And, or as really? he said, well, yeah, yeah, you had to have seen the elephant, I believe is what he used yep. to say. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I think, though, as the years have gone by, people have realized that, that it, you don't necessarily need to have that. Does it hurt? No, at all. You know, as you said earlier, Brent, you know, it, it, it pays to have some experience out there because you know how you're going to react. But I don't think you really need it. And, you know, we have our own Tiger McKee, who I personally mm -hmm. think is one of the finest instructors anywhere. And Tiger is not a ninja warrior demon of darkness. I mean, he wasn't a cop and he wasn't in the military. But what Tiger did was he's gotten training from virtually everyone you can think of, including a lot of these returned vets who opened shooting schools. And then he took the best of what he learned from everyone and, and he decided what was consistent. And then that's how he's grown his business over the last 20 years. And you know yeah. what, what, what he teaches is solid as a rock, absolutely sound. And so I think we have to be careful because we demean those kind of people who do a good job, you know, who have a strong following simply because we say, well, you weren't really a soldier, so I'm not going to listen to anything you have to say. Well, there's a big element at play here and that you have to be good at teaching. Yes. That's, 
half Amen. the equation, or I don't, I don't know what the right percentage of that is, but it's a big percentage in terms of what's important. You know, you have to be good at teaching. Yeah. Um, you know, there are a lot of, a lot of people that would, uh, uh, you know, star in the next James Bond movie for door kicking that can't teach worth a darn, you know? So there's, there's multiple facets to this thing. I think we've all been at those classes too. Yeah. <laughs> So we're 15 minutes into the lecture the first morning, you're thinking, how am I going to get out of here? <laughs> well, Maybe if, shoot if you don't leave with learned skills, you know, that you can go practice and repeat and continue training, you've wasted your time, no matter how good they are, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, I think it's important, too, that you look at what it is. If, if, if you know, the fundamentals of marksmanship are pretty standard, front sight, you know, trigger control, follow through. Anybody can teach those, and that's where it's really critical to be a good teacher, a good instructor. When you're starting to get into some of the more esoteric stuff, and that's what really has graded on me at times, um, when a guy is saying, you know, room entry this, and room and I do this, and it's like, but I know your background, and you've probably never done a room entry. So, to me, that's almost false advertising. If you can uh, instruct people on things you personally haven't done a bunch And that's where it gets into that differentiation. I mean, Tom, you've focused on the front sight and pressed the trigger and followed through countless times, but you haven't tracked, you know, uh, armed convicts through the desert in Rhodesia or whatever. So why would you teach, you know, a man track? Exactly. (laughs) And, uh, you know, so, but there's, unfortunately, sometimes people hang out their shingle and they try to be all inclusive and, uh, that's where you start getting into some of those problems and giving, giving a bad name to instructors. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I've been to some people who I would say are arguably not as, has uh, experienced as many instructors I've been with, but there was something that had a certain charisma about them, which made learning what they did know entertaining and interesting and Mm -hmm. engaging. And so like you say, if, if there's a one day class and it's on fundamentals and it's taught by somebody who can actually talk and is engaging and it makes you feel welcome there and doesn't demean you and scream at you. I've seen instructors challenge students to fights, you know, it's like, yeah. Rip, boy, yeah. you know, I had one do that and yeah. challenged everybody to a gunfight. Yeah. It's like, no, no lie. Yeah. Oh, wow. I've seen it. I know. I, <laughs> yeah. I, no, I've seen it. I know. And explained how he would win because you know, he wouldn't flinch when the bullets were flying at him. He would take his time and aim and just be cool and take you out. This was our concealed carry instructor. Yeah. Oh, really? Lord. Yeah. Mm-hmm. With a bunch of old ladies on the firing line waiting with yeah. well, 22 pistols, you know. To shed some additional light on that, he also told the class how hollow point bullets work. Because <laughs> when they come out of the barrel, they expand into whirling fan blades of death. Well, and they right fly through down. the air as whirling fan kidding? blades of death. Wow. This big. You better write that down because I, you I know, did. I've yeah, written many be. articles about that experience. <laughs> so <laughs> was it overconfidence or simple mental illness on his part? I think yes. he had too many burritos or something. <laughs> I, mean, I don't know. <laughs> well, you know, I was at one class one time and it was taught by a guy who's actually still a writer, not for us, but he's a writer, <laughs> a, a, a medically retired police officer. And I attended a class that he did one day and literally I would say 10 minutes into the morning lecture, which was out on the firing line. Honestly, it was about maybe 12 people, half of the people just reached down, picked up their range bags, turned around, walked off the range. No yeah. kidding. And, and the parking lot conversation was, I'm not putting up with that shit, you know? And really? I lasted through the day just because it was, it was such entertainment. I just couldn't believe. I kept thinking, no, this has got to be a joke. This has got to yeah. be a joke. This, you know, um, and, I, and, you know, if you remember something is that to be an expert, all you really need to know is more than the average person. And so, I mean, Google it and, and look up definition of expert. And so people who have, like how many school teachers that we all had who were two pages ahead of you in the, in the handbook? <laughs> You know, and you kept thinking, how do they know all this stuff? And then you read two pages ahead and you realize, oh, they're, they're reading two (laughs) pages ahead. And I think there are instructors like that. And I'm not saying that's even really a horrible thing, but you know, if if they're teaching the basics and it's, and it sounds good and it's reasonable and you're learning from them, well then I don't think anybody on this trio would, would argue that. 
Well, let's yeah. let's talk about concealed carry. Let's get controversial here, because as the representative non-sworn guy in this little trio of, of uh, I was going to say wisdom, but there's no wisdom here. Yeah, so. let's not get carried away. Um, <laughs> I, I think I think uh, you got to really take a close look at that in the concealed carry market. I mean, that's where most of my training experiences have been in one form or fashion. And uh, I don't think you need to have shot someone to be an effective concealed carry trainer. I also don't think that because you excelled at squad tactics and blowing up buildings in Fallujah, you're going to be a good concealed carry instructor either. Now, if I needed to learn how to blow up buildings and kick doors, that's the guy I would go to, yep. right? No, yep. no question. But and, and I think that's the, the mission big issue. And what's the goal of the class? And that's that's the big one. And I, I'll get in trouble for saying this, just like you did last week, saying some things. But I always call that the uh, "who farted in church" question because if you ask it, everybody goes. <laughs> but the question being, just because you've got all these confirmed kills, um, you don't understand what it's like for the little old lady door greeter at Walmart walking to her car mm-hmm. at night because you're not going to toss a frag grenade. You're not going to lay down suppressive fire. And we've all been to those, Walmart. Right? Well, that's true. <laughs> you know, but no, I mean, we've all been to those classes where, you know, the guy's standing up there flexing and talking about this and kicking this and that. And it's like, if I do what you're telling me, I will be convicted criminally and go to prison, mm-hmm. you know? And I think that's the big thing that, um, everybody needs to be watching out for is again, it's great that they've got qualifications. And like you said, if, if I wanted to learn door kicking and, you know, throwing frags, that that'd be the guy, but yeah. his experience doesn't translate to East Bumfrey, Texas and walking to your car from the burrito joint. Right. Brent, Brent I think you'll, you will agree with me on this is that when I was a, on the police department, one of the challenges that we had were people who were coming out of the military who were either MPs or combat veterans, you know, of some kind, because they came into the job thinking that, oh, well, I already know all about this because yeah. I've been in the, in the army. Yep. And, and some people, now some learned, you know, they applied whatever training they had that was still valuable that they could translate to, you know, doing their current job. But some of them just never got it. And they nope. still mm-hmm. thought they were in the jungle in Vietnam, yep. you know. And uh, so now let's translate that to somebody who opens up a school, you know, at some range or in a dirt lot somewhere. And that you, how do you know? He's, he, like you said, well, you, you said that if you do something they teach you, that may get you arrested. Yeah. You know? yeah. And, it, and it certainly might, which begs the question, how do you know one way or another if the class that you're about to sign up for is something that you really want to take. Anyone? Anyone? Well, first of all, don't go on the internet because someone will go, oh, that wasn't a bad class. And then we all know what comes next. Well, you are stupid and a scumbag and okay, whatever. So, (laughs) but having said that word of mouth is really, really important. I I think I would do what you do with Amazon reviews, (laughs) you know, it's like before you buy your, you know, your new filter set for your air conditioning, I always read the comments, you know, and then, so what you can do is you can distill the, I love everything about this and and I would buy a hundred of them if I could to the, I hate this and would never buy it again, no matter. So then the people in the middle tend to tell you what really is going on. And I found those kind of reviews, you know, to look at who's in the middle, you know, and yeah. I especially like the ones who say he's really good at this, 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 and this, I would probably not put a lot of stock when he's teaching you this, this, and this, and this, you know, something like that. I would, I would add one facet to that and say, look for the reviews verbally or online or whatever from people who have been to multiple classes. Because well, a great example. There's a, a big nationally known shooting school and I won't mention the name that, People go there the first time and they come back ranting and raving and, oh, this was the greatest thing ever. Oh, it was so good. And it, to them, it was. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure it was. Yeah. But to someone who's been to other actually good schools, they'll come back with a completely different story, you know? Yep. That's so you got really to have, have some perspective there. You know, it's real regional, too. Um, you know, I'm outside of Joplin, Missouri, and we have an instructor here locally who's you know, has regionally famous kind of. If you're going to do this here, you're probably going to go with this gentleman. Mm-hmm. What just so happens by a fluke, he's actually a really good guy. He does a good job. He teaches well. But I've certainly talked to people who the first time they ever took a class 
and you bump into them at the Brandon's gun store or something. And you're right. They're such rabid fans. It's the only place ever you should ever go, no matter yep. what, you know, yep. and you try to tell them, well, no, actually you should try some yeah. other schools. But this brings up a good point though, because we have a, a school like that regionally too. I took an advanced carry class years and years ago. And um, it was having been to dozens of things since then, it was really good. So I think it's an important point to bring up that you don't have to go to those one, two or three top national schools that have year long waiting lists, you know, do it if you can, by all means, yeah. they're great. But there are, there's some really good training out there within an hour's drive. If you look, you know, yeah. I, I wanted to hit on Roy's point. I always call it cult of personality mm-hmm. because Typically, you see it in that first time student, but that's what you got to be aware of. There's certain names in our industry, and we're going to stay away from that side of it. But if you mention their name, everybody goes, you know, and if you start talking to people, you'll get that. Roy is on the call. I know. I'm 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 here. I can hear you. He's right. He's right there. (laughs) Yeah. But but we, we all know who we're talking about, but they have their fanboys that oh, being intentionally vague, we brought our instructor in one time and, and my friend said it was like the Grateful Dead show had hit town. They were doing their tasty veggie burritos and camping yeah. out. And it was like, we worship you, almighty shooting God. And yeah. and frankly, I think the guy's nuts, but his his fanboys love him. So. It goes back to your buyer beware and look at kind of that middle ground of what people are saying. Yeah. Well, it goes to, it goes to say the importance of a humble instructor too. You yes. Know? That's I, it, but that's really important. I think you're yeah. exactly right. Cause you know, there's, it's always means more when somebody else tells you, gee, you're really good at what you do rather than you saying, I'm really good at what I do. Yep. And, you know, watch and I'll show you how much better I am than you are. You know. No, when somebody names a technique after themselves, if anybody tells you the Brent Wheat double back spring hand attack door kick maneuver, run, run away fast. Yeah. And you know what I found? Instructors who use all of that terminology, terminology tend to also be a bit onerous, at least in my opinion. You know, yeah. you do the Smith pull and the Frank draw and the schmuck <laughs> kick in. And then it's like, thank really? you for saying schmuck. <laughs> uh, yeah. It's like, why don't you just not use, can, can we say one thing about that? There's that position. Sewell, Sewell. Remember, I think mm-hmm. may, maybe we talked about that one time, you know, where they, they hold the gun in front of them like this. So behind your hand, so it keeps it out. Well, yeah. about the time I took over hand gunner, there was uh, all the instructors at the time, they were all starting to say, we teach position Sewell, you know, and it was real affordable. And well, I thought, where did this come from? Because to me, it didn't really, yeah, I mean, okay, I carry my gun safely, you know, <laughs> that's all right. Uh, well, I tracked it down and it ended up, it was a couple of guys who were in a Central American country who, who were f- former military people and police officers had gone down there to train their special operations SWAT guys and they, none of them had good holsters, none of these guys they were training. And so they invented this position. So Sewell would be like, South, wait, are you right? kidding me? Oh no, this is absolutely. That's true. where it came from. True. Yeah. Yes. And so, so, See, they, so they, learn, you can learn something new every day. I just learned something <laughs> new today. Thank you guys. So they taught them to, you, you put your hand in front of your chest, put the gun on your hand. So it forces the muzzle away. Cause what they were doing was when they would roll up on a scene, they'd all fall out of this van that they had. And they would shoot themselves in the foot and guns would go off. And it was, you know, cause these weren't really organized guys and they didn't have real good equipment. So they, they, they invented this position and they called the position Sewell. So keep the muzzle down and everything will be okay. So I tracked these guys down and I called them up and I said, Hey, can you tell me what the real story is? And they, and they were laughing. They were saying, yeah, oh, trust me, man. We laugh every time we see somebody training <laughs> with it. He said, we just did that though. So these idiots wouldn't shoot themselves in the foot or shoot us. And that, he, that was they, worth the price of admission to this show right there. And if you don't story. believe me in an early, <laughs> early edition of handgunner, I have a letter from them that I, cause I said, would you put that down please? And it was, I, I printed it in the reader mail where they explained exactly where that came from. And as one guy said, you know, I mean, I'm not saying it's a bad thing. I think there's better ways to be in a ready position. There's better, better ways to move with a gun. You know, we're not here to really talk about that. But that's the kind of stuff you have to be care, careful of because things that were never intended to be suddenly are used for what they were not intended for, you know. Hey, but it looks cool. 
It yeah. looks looks high speed. It looks so. <laughs> it's like when you're at one of these classes, like you're at a CCW class, and there's always some nerd that wants to know, well, you know, when are we going to learn how to do rapid reloads and high speed movements, and and when can we learn when to kick a door in? You know, like yep. really, why don't you concentrate on not shooting yourself in the foot? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good start. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so how how do we how do we help our viewers and readers find those right people? Do you just Google gun training or you know? I I look at it for a new instructor. I want to know what have they been to, and if they say, "Well, I've done I've trained with this guy and this guy, and I've been to Gunsight and Thunder Ranch." You don't have to hit them all before, but if a guy goes, "Well, I learned in the army," or you know. I, I went to Billy Bob Slam Fire School because every really good instructor, and we are blessed to know all of them, the good and the bad, the guys that are really the top notch, they are continually being students because it's a perishable skill. Yeah. And, you know, if you do it, we do it, I do it. I don't care what instructor you talk about. They periodically have somebody else, you know, what, what they say, Tiger Woods has a swing coach. So, the top level instructors continually go to classes. And if a guy cannot tell you that he's been to, to anything other than maybe one or two classes, I'd be a little leery of that. Yeah. I agree. I like the open mind. I mean, that's one of the things I really like about like Gunsight, for example, you know, I don't know if you guys know this or not, but they're really keen on the Weaver stance out at Gunsight. I've heard uh, this. Yes. But no, but if, if you, if you have a different, if you're an isosceles person, they'll, their message won't be that's wrong. You have to do Weaver or you'll die and Nicki Minaj will sing at your funeral, right? It's, you know, hey, we teach Weaver. Here's why we teach it. Uh, there are pros and cons. I tell you what, for this class, maybe try this thing. See how you like it. Let the dust settle and then go with what works for you. You know, I yeah. mean, that's, that's humility in action. And I, I think that's just an important attribute for any good training I program. Agree. For me too, if, if you're on the line and if any of the instructors or range line guys are yelling, that's a danger signal to me. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, maybe if you're a really seasoned class, you know, you're the, this is, you're in the 10th iteration of a, you know, series of training and you're being an idiot. And somebody says, you're, you know, you're being an idiot. Damn it. Don't do that. I got yeah. that. But if you've got novices and stuff, that's not how you teach people. And so when you see, I've unfortunately seen a lot of the military guys do that, but that's what their culture is. Yeah. You know? Well, let me, let me tell one bad instructor story, which will probably lead to 50 others. But I, I always <laughs> call this like the, pen, or the ultimate of bad instructors. We went to a certain school and I think it's still around out in the desert. And uh, not gunsight, obviously. We went kind of as a lark, try out a one day class. So we get out there, and the first thing they did, the instructional cadre marched in, literally, you know, and squared corners and came across and parade rest in front of the students. And they went through, they stepped forward, came back to attention, and I'm Gunnery Sergeant Hartman, you know, blah, blah, blah. And I've been shooting 20, blah, blah, blah. So they get to the end of the line. And I call this guy a kid. He was maybe 30, but with a literally a stereotypical squeaky high voice. I've been shooting over four years and blah, 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 blah. So there's their strike one, right? So they shot against the students, which I think is poor form. Any instructor should be able to demonstrate a skill on demand anytime, but you don't go mano a mano with the students. Right. That's just a, a sign of dominance or insecurity or whatever. Well, what they did was they had uh, pneumatic turners. So these guys, we were uh, using long guns, carbines. These guys were carrying race rigs. So, you know, basically a holster that's not there and all this. So they had shoot off against the students and we were watching and we were kind of standing back. And with the pneumatic turners, as soon as you hear the solenoid start to release the air, you know, there's a, a little second of a gap. Well, the students were doing what they told, wait till the target faces and you come up. Well, these guys were starting their presentation the second <laughs> you heard a pss. So we knew what to do then. So we get up there and all three of us beat <laughs> them. And then it was, well, that was a good drill. Way everybody. to represent FMG, man. Well, well it was before FMG, yeah. but Take one of the guys actually anyway. walked over. Exactly. Walked over. <laughs> well, you guys have done this before. I I actually, one of the only times I ever got to be cool in my entire shooting career, I said, no, I'd never picked up a gun before I got here today. 
<laughs> so, so did you buy a condo or not? Huh? Uh, that was part of the presentation. <laughs> so it was, funny. it was awful. It was just, the facility was fantastic, but their, their folks were either crazy or un- inexperienced. And it was, it was really to demean the students. And fortunately we had enough experience. We didn't let that happen, but it was kind of fun. Hey, can we, can we go back to something Roy brought up a minute ago? Cause I think we veered off track and you asked the question of how do you find good instructors and in good schools like locally or anywhere? And I think we, well, true to form went off target, but, but, but that's say. okay. Um, I, I didn't want to leave that one hanging. I, I think yeah. one way is uh, the gun counter, your local Absolutely. gun store counter. That's a place because step one is to assemble all the names. What are all the options out there? Step two is to figure out which ones are good you know, and write for what you want to learn. But, you know, you know what we all do when we go to a gun store, we talk about gun stuff, right? So you're, you're exactly a lot right. of conversations every day about yeah. classes and local teachers and instructors. And I think that's where you get the, the names and they'll have recommendations for you. When I, I spoke at a local gun club uh, one time here and, uh, and boy, I was surprised at the amount of knowledge there was, you know, amongst these 75 or hundred shooters from mm-hmm. old time, you know, 80 year old bullseye shooters who talked, talked to me about shooting in the late thirties, uh, to the most modern equipped three gun guy, you know? Yeah. And, uh, and so you're right. That's a bit like the gun store is seek out the gun club, seek out the gun store. And, uh, remember, cause the best advice is the advice of a trusted friend and shooters being shooters with rare exceptions. You know, they're, I don't think most of the people would steer you wrong on purpose. You yeah. Know? And, and yeah. if somebody says, you know what? I mean, I don't really recommend I went there. I was a little bit disappointed. You might have a different experience, but at least that helps to set the stage for you. you yep. Yeah. And, you know, something we didn't hit on, but, uh, you know, Tom always makes his famous statement that we're so binary, uh, in shooting <laughs> that, you know, it's either good or it's bad. There's nothing in between, but that's the thing you really need to, to attend a lot of instruction, both as a tune-up for your skills to get them back up to speed, but just to find different ways of doing it. Mm -hmm. You know, even if the only thing you learn is I'll never do it that way, but that's what makes you a well-rounded shooter, regardless whether it's hunting, self-defense, competition, you have to have that wide variety of experiences to be able, you know, use the proverbial tool in the toolbox, but it's really true. You got to put a bunch of tools there so that you can pull it out in that one situation and, and succeed better. So I think it's critical. Don't get all wrapped around the axle. I'm going to go to the, I'm going to go to gun site and then I'll be a gunfighter from hell. Well, you'll be very skilled after that. But even Ken, the guy that runs it says now go to Thunder Ranch or go to whomever you choose to go to and keep doing it. Repeat Mm -hmm. ad ad nauseum. Well, Tiger has a book he wrote called the book of two guns. And uh, if you go to his website, which I can't it's shoot right Academy, I think, but, but, you know, go to his website and it's, it's really interesting. It's hand printed. He has this beautiful, clear printing and he illustrates it himself too. And what he did was it, through hundreds of, of classes that he took, he took what he felt was most important that he learned. And then he, he sort of condensed all of this uh, and He's told me, and it's certainly been my experience, you guys too, I've, I've gone to two or three day schools and really only come away maybe with one or two things yeah, that I yeah. thought, well, that was really interesting. I never thought of doing it that way before. And then if you apply it to yourself and you adopt it, then you realize that that was really useful, even if all the other stuff you ignored or you already knew all the other stuff. So I think after those half dozen classes under your belt, now you're going because you just want to polish the edge. You know, Mm -hmm. you're, you're there to just, you know, let's keep honing that edge smarter, better, faster, you know, but certainly be grounded in the uh, basics first. To be a Delta Ninja Seal Super (laughs) Squirrel Tier 1 Deluxe (laughs) Operator with gold leaf clusters. Well, you know, uh, let me quote, and I hope I don't misquote him, but uh, Clint uh, says this and he's, he's so true. And it was one of those a grounding moments for me was someone had asked him, when are we going to do the ninja seal, you know, rundown and all this kind of stuff. And he, he said, well, just remember advanced task tactics are just the basics applied, you know, and it just mm-hmm. really struck home to me. And it's like, if you don't have that grounding in the basics who we're talking about here, I think you can't, apl- you can't apply anything to the advanced because you don't have the basics yet. And so, yeah. If you're one of those 5 million new gun owners, uh, 
you know, what'd you say, Tom, go to the local gun store and ask, where can I yeah. get training? It might be right there. Yeah. Where, where can I become a mall ninja? <laughs> <laughs> Paul Blart, mall. <laughs> yeah. Well, first you need a mission specific grimace. Well, guys, I think we've wrapped this thing up, kicked the dead equine all we can. So any, any deep relevant parting thoughts from the assembled crew? I think just do it. I'm gonna, you know, I'm going to say, yeah. yeah, that, yeah, I echo that for sure. I would say stay in the, make sure your instructor's in the same lane as you, you yeah. know, like, uh, yeah. you know, if I want to learn about concealed carry, I'm going to track down a guy like, like Moss, you know, he spent more time in courtrooms and <laughs> dealing with concealed carry cases than probably anyone, you know? Yep. So exactly. That's, that's where I go, you know? So find the instructor that's, uh, understands the area that you need to learn so. and then keep doing it. Keep going to classes, keep training, buy more bullets, go shooting and keep reading guns and American handgunner magazines. There you go. <laughs> That's the most How's important. That? Yeah. That was almost like a professional wrap up. Wasn't it? Damn, he not, slipped not that us. right in there. Yeah. <laughs> oh, And with that, we hope you're enjoying the Guns Magazine podcast. Please tell all your friends, even those crazy voting liberals. Guns Magazine is number one in the business, and we're using our decades of friendships to bring you the most interesting chats in the gun world. If you got questions or comments, please drop me a line. That's editor at gunsmagazine.com. Make sure you don't miss out on anything by subscribing to us on your favorite podcast directory and YouTube. Of course, you can always listen and download our episodes at gunsmagazine.com. And while you're at it, don't forget to check out our sister publication, American Handgunner Magazine at AmericanHandgunner.com. And finally, before we go, we would like to remind you to check out our sponsor, Kimber Firearms at KimberAmerica.com. That's it for this episode of the Guns Magazine podcast. On behalf of the hardworking staff here at FMG Publications, I'm Guns Magazine editor Brent Wheat. Now get out there and get shooting. Get shooting.